Welcome to the Mind Body Podcast, your rebellious podcast about a strong body, calm mind, healing, and fully living. I'm your host, Maria Angelova, creator of the Angelova Method, an integrative approach to mind and body connection. The Angelova Method redefines your success equation to include a healthy body and a healthy mind. Hi, Rebels, and welcome to the Mind Body Podcast, your rebellious podcast with me, your host, Maria, where it is all about a strong body, calm mind, healing, and fully living. Today, our special guest is Dominique Handler, who is joining us all the way from L.A., to talk all about mental health. Welcome, Dominique. How are you doing? I'm doing so wonderful and I'm so excited. I am, <laughs> I am so excited. Such such a hot topic. And yeah, I think it's just something that um, as we just started talking before we hit the record button, it's something that more education, more acceptance, more openness. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's a big topic nowadays. And I think especially... With all the things happening in the world, it's more needed than ever. So I look yes. forward to diving into that. But before that, we're going to make it exciting. And we're going to tell people who Dominique is. So give us three words that describe you and tell us a little bit of a backstory behind each word. Oh, my God. Okay. Who am I? I am a drama queen. <laughs> you own it. <laughs> I love life. I love stories. I love to hear, you know, who are you, where you come from? I'm curious, I should say. And I'm also just passionate and loving and just, I just love, I have a heart for people. That's my ministry. That's who I am. Yeah. And you know, it's, I think I've said that before in the podcast. I think it's so interesting when so many different people who don't know each other come on and there's the, like the word curious and the word passionate, yeah. the love, yeah. lovable comes so frequently. Yeah. I think definitely the power of the tribe and the people that we attract around Absolutely. Us. It's yeah. so very true. It's so very true. That's why we're here. We're supposed we're to be here. connecting yes. and, and vibing off each other. That's the purpose of being human. See, <laughs> you're talking my language. We're vibing. We're energetically connected. I love it. Right. So when you tell us what you're curious, you're passionate, you love people. What what got you into, so you have a, a background in nursing. What That's got correct. you into the arena of mental health and mental wellness? Okay, I'm going to be fully transparent here if that's okay, because I have yes. nothing to hide and I really want to share. <laughs> so um, I would say from a very young age, I remember as far as back as eighth grade, I knew I wanted to be a nurse. That's just the, the path I wanted to go in. I just wanted to care for people, help people, assist people. That's just how I'm engineered as a person. And then uh, from nursing, just so many platforms, so many levels of care, so many things to explore in nursing. That's the beauty of that career. So you, I started in critical care, believe it or not. And uh, that was very, you know, heartfelt and, and, and very, uh, you know, it was very stressful, I should say, because, you know, it was a lot of trauma, you know, just seeing people yeah. die and it was just very traumatic, but it was, it was purposeful, right? And then, so as I moved up the administrative track into nursing, uh, behavioral health fell into my lap because I wanted to start as a, you know, management administration, you know, more that level serving and uh, mental health fell in my lap. And I said, oh, oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I don't know anything about psychiatric nursing. I'm not a psych nurse. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know what I can do to help you. And the person said, well, I don't need your psychiatric skills. I need your management skills. Well, as soon as I arrived on the scene onto a 29-bed psychiatric acute um, nursing unit, I realized I had more in common than I could ever imagine because at that time I was in an abusive relationship. So I was experiencing domestic violence. I was experiencing um, a partner who was deeply in the throes of uh, substance use. And it was really a traumatic experience in my family, but eye opening at the same time, because I realized, oh my God, this is mental illness. And it hadn't even dawned on me in all of the years that we'd been married, that that's what I was dealing with, a partner suffering from mental illness. So um, moving forward, uh, that epiphany, that eye opening moment, as I'm embarking on trying to help people who are, you know, experiencing mental illness and, in, you know, and I'll be honest, I had some implicit bias there because I thought, well, I don't know anything about it. You know, this is not my arena, but it was definitely my arena. 
which goes to the stigma attached with mental illness that, you know, oh, that's not me. That's not anybody that I know. No, we all know somebody who suffers from mental illness. We are all connected. Mental illness has every face, every walk of life, every, every life level, if you will, um, you will see the face of mental illness. And that's how I got started. Yeah. And, you know, I, I appreciate you saying, even as a nurse, even as somebody who was in the medical field, right. when you're in the midst of it, sometimes we miss the obvious signs. Mm -hmm. I will tell you when I first started doing mental uh, mindset coaching for myself. Okay. Um, the very first seminar I was with, and they were talking about how you were raised, the subconscious versus conscious. Okay. And I went to the teacher and I said, I don't have any problems related to that. I was like, but I have some other problems that I don't know what it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> when I reflect back, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. And I didn't know what the opportunities are because all I knew is what I knew. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And when I start opening and that's why I think it is so important to be curious. You started with the word curious. Yes. If you're feeling off, if something just doesn't feel right and you cannot put your finger on it, right? right. Start asking around. Like you said, yeah. I would say probably most of us know at least one person who has yeah. dealt with some kind of mental issue, right? Right. From any kind of severity, from very light to very severe. Correct. So can you talk to us from a professional standpoint? Mm -hmm. Like, what are some of the things that we should pay attention to when we're feeling off and we just, I think one thing, and tell me if you agree with this, Dominique, we have normalized not feeling good. Oh, yeah. I it's agree. Like, oh, yeah. I feel crappy, but you know, I'm really stressed. I'm go, go, go. I'm really tired. Mm -hmm. And that's just how life it is. I'm getting older. So therefore, this is how it is. And right. I don't expect anything to change. That's correct. I, I absolutely agree with you 100%. We, um, as humans, do not do a good job of listening to the signs and symptoms present physiologically, right? Your body tells you. Yes. Your body will give you every symptom, every sign that something is wrong. Innately, it is embedded into your DNA. Your, your cardiovascular system, for instance, when you're experiencing anxiety, your heart rate goes up, right? You're breathing, you know, you, you get labored oh. breathing. So you get those signs. And yeah, we ignore them. We compress them, we compact them, we put it on a shelf and we don't address it. So from a uh, clinical standpoint, we would advise, listen to your body, you know, get in tune with your body. And that's where holistically that meditation that now we're understanding how beneficial it is because we get in tune with our breathing, our mind, connecting the mind, body, and soul. For some reason in a medical world, we try to put the mind over here, the body over here, the soul over here, you know, but it's all intertwined, all connected, packaged together, right? But we want to separate it, right? You know, just for instance, if you had diabetes or if you had a cardiovascular issue, you take medication to lower your blood pressure, you take uh, insulin to lower your, you know, stabilize your blood glucose levels. So with the mental illness, we have to do the work to stabilize our minds. It's just that important. Yeah. And I love that you're talking about the mind-body connection because I work with the body mm -hmm. and I work very much with the mind-body connection and people are shocked. And I'm talking from people who are athletes and people who mm -hmm. are super active, how disconnected their mind-body connection is. Right. And right. again, going back to like what you said, Oh, my neck is tight. Oh, my shoulder, you know, my neck hurts. My shoulders are tight. I can't really take a deep breath. Oh, that's okay. That's how I feel every day. Therefore, right. it's normal. Mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. not. Or I would have people who tell me, well, I'm used to the stress. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> it's right, like, right, right. okay, if you have normalized it. That doesn't make it okay. And we know that chronic stress has long-term mm -hmm. implications and it's oh, related yeah. to mortality and disease and all of that. So I love that you talk about the experience in the body. Yeah. And I love that you talk about slowing down and calming the mind mm -hmm. because that is also not something that, I mean, to be honest with you, were you ever taught to calm your mind or no. to your body or no. any of that? No. Was I. no, no. I was taught to push. You got to push, keep going. You got this. Don't worry about it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Well, how sustainable is that? It's not. Because that's when, we, that's when we start crashing and burning because we are just pushing our bodies to the limit. 
without listening and being in tune, like I was saying. So it's it's detrimental, you know, a lot of times when we don't listen. Listen, yeah. What would you say, at what point of their journey do people come to you? Because I will tell you, I work with the body. So a lot of times people will come to me when there's pain in the body, right? And the pain has gotten to a point where they're like, I can't put up with this anymore, right? It's a distraction, mm-hmm. which I also don't believe we need to get to the point of pain before right. we address the issue. Right. Um, that's just part of our lifestyle today. Right. So what do you say from a mental standpoint, at what point do you usually see people? Do you see a lot of people being very proactive about it? Or are most people showing up at your doors at the Los Angeles Outpatient Center where they're already actively experiencing symptoms? We see it both, just the full, you know, full um, continuum. We see people who are experiencing even psychosis to the level where they're out of touch with reality all the way from, you know what, my life is disrupted. I, I want to be able to get up and go to class, you know, go to, you know, follow my regular schedule, but my life is just so disrupted right now. I can't even get up and get dressed. I can't even get out of bed. I have no motivation. I'm a motivated, ma- motivated, um, energic. I, there's no energy. You know, I haven't been able to keep my routine up. I can't keep relationships. So it's re- literally at that point where the, the, your normal life functions are disrupted and you you are realizing that okay i am not going to be able to function this way much longer because i can't even get up and take a shower you know i can't even fix a meal for myself or you, some of our clients have children i can't even take care of my children and mm-hmm. cultivate my marriage or my or, or my interpersonal relationships so it's that level where people realize if i don't do something i'm not going to be able to maintain my lifestyle or if i don't do something different I am going to wind up having to be maybe involuntarily detained on a 5150 because that's California law as well. If you are not safe in society, danger to self, danger to others, or gravely disabled, meaning you cannot take care of yourself uh, appropriately, uh, you know, performing your activities of daily living, providing meals for yourself, you know, so the state of California takes that very seriously. So we have the various levels of what it can be like as far as mental illness and mental receiving that help. You know, I think one very important point that you make is that you have to take care of yourself first before you can take care of your kids, before you can take care of your relationship, your work, your colleagues, your parents, whoever else is in your life. Mm -hmm. And I think once again, that is something that we are not taught to prioritize. It's like take care of everything else. Mm -hmm. And then if you have time, take care for yourself. Yes. in the, you guys are an outpatient center, and um, I do have to tell you, when I went to the website, I do, yeah. I do like, I did check out some of the services you offer, and it made me smile. Yeah. Because, yes, you know, there's certain uh, states of mental illness when there is medication that's necessary mm-hmm. to control the um, symptoms and the condition. But yes. you guys do a lot of, I would call it alternative wellness modalities. Mm-hmm. Can you please, yeah. that's the world I am into. Can you talk a little yeah. bit more about that and like what kind of from a professional standpoint working in a you know mental wellness center what kind of results you are seeing with the people who you're working with oh absolutely so we are evidence-based and we do have that holistic um side as well where we do meditation we do yoga we do beat-based movement therapy but the evidence does show us that these modalities of treatment such as CBT, which retrains your thought process, or DBT, which retrains the way you think about yourself, Um, extensional therapy, just showing you um, your environment and how to function accordingly, EMDR, which is very like cutting edge science on how we can tap into the levels of trauma that you're enduring and show you how to cope with each and every incident. And we also have affirmative therapy because we're very inclusive. We have our LGBTQ plus IA community that struggle with being able to be their authentic selves. So we want you to be um, shored up on those skills that once you leave our walls, our four walls, and you're out there in the community, you have the proper coping skills and the techniques and the strategies that you need. So it is, it's a knowledge-based, evidence-based with that holistic um, side because we want to meet our audience where they are we're on every social media platform because that's where our clientele is too so we do tiktok that's informative we do uh youtube you know just everything we can to reach our audience to let them know that we are here and we have the science another thing that we have here uh tms which is a 
procedure that puts magnetic impulses uh, to the brain to reroute the neurons that helps depression and anxiety. And some of our outcomes, we, we do surveys and we measure your anxiety levels. We measure your depression levels pre, during, and post-treatment. So we get those outcomes to see like what's working, you know, so that's very helpful. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who is like, I feel off, but you know, you'll hear comments on just like, I don't feel cuckoo or I don't feel crazy. And therefore I don't want to make that call or I don't want to even inquire mm -hmm. because I mean, I'll tell you, I told a friend recently, I was like, you need to get help. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Like it's, you're there. Right. And for whatever reason, you know, there could be various reasons why somebody is resistant. Mm -hmm. I do think, unfortunately, one of these, what are people going to think if they know that I'm going to therapy or however they want to classify. Right. So tell to those people who are like, I know I need the help. I think I need mm -hmm. the help. Mm -hmm but I'm embarrassed, ashamed, whatever word right. comes to making that right. call and asking for help. Yeah. So we get people all the time uh, that are in that contemplative stage and where they're like, oh, I'm not so sure. My request is that you would just inquire. I'm using your word. Just get the, the your questions answered because um, information is a good thing, right? Information is enlightening. It's going to open doors that you never thought would be open. So I would say make that call, connect with us and let us give you the information because even if it, if our clinic is not the right fit for you, we have so many resources, so many partnerships that we have developed that we will find a solution for you. So allow us to do that for you. We're here for you. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I think I'll tell you, I've had a few guests who have worked uh, or who actively work in um mental health, mental well-being type of facilities. And mm -hmm. a lot of them, I would say, I don't know if that's what you're seeing, have a history like you shared your story of mm -hmm. something that they have personally go to. So, you know, what I tell my clients is when I coach you, I don't coach you because I read a book and right. I'm telling you to do something that I haven't been through. I'm teaching right. you real life experience. So oh, yeah. dealt with a lot of these emotions that perhaps you're dealing with, right? So mm -hmm. I, can, I can relate to what you're going through. Would you say that, you see that in the industry from where you stand? Absolutely. That relatability is really the driver, you know, for keeping uh, people engaged and pe keeping people understanding that you're not alone. Because a lot of times when you're going through things, you feel isolated, don't you? You feel like, oh my God, why me? You know, and it's like, oh, it's not just you. It's the human condition. Let me tell you about me. Let me tell you about Jane, let me tell you about John, because it's a myriad of people that are suffering just like you. And that's where a clinic like this is very helpful, that group setting, because my experience and your experience, we're going to gain from each other. We're going to learn from each other. Yeah. You know, I had a client refer the friend and okay. we had a conversation and then my client said, I don't know what you told her, but I think you made her feel normal. Wow. <laughs> I think she thought she was on an island feeling a right way. And, right. and, you know, I work with a lot of women, men, and sometimes women will say, well, well, you don't understand. And I'm like, you might be surprised of how much I understand. Right. That's and right. I share a story and they'll be like, why? Because we perceive people through yeah. that lens of what we think that person is, or, right. you know, what that person's story is. But right. the stories that are behind might be very different than what you what you see because we have certain stereotypes absolutely and the stereotypes is where we run into trouble because i'm pegging you and i'm making these assumptions that you know it's a certain way when it's completely the opposite so we have to be careful with that right we'll miss out yeah i, I love the book i don't know if you have read it, the four agreements have you read that book i have not so one of the four agreements is do not make assumptions. And I'll tell oh. you personally, for me, that has been a game changer. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I mean, in the context maybe of meeting somebody or a situation, you just assume yeah. what the situation is instead of right. asking questions right. or giving the person an opportunity to show you who they are and share exactly. their story. Exactly. Uh, it's a powerful experience when you do not assume. Exact. Oh my gosh. Egg, I'm going to say exactly and absolutely in the same, in the same word, if I can, but I can't. So exactly. Absolutely. Let me say it. 
<laughs> because the experience is a good teacher. It's an excellent teacher. And, you know, nobody's getting it all right. Okay. Newsflash, people. Nobody has it all together. Oh, you look like your life is all together. No, my life is quite chaotic. You know, I just have to utilize the skills that I've learned, you know, over the years. And I have to just really just be open, continue to keep my heart open so I can continue to learn as I grow. I just want to grow. I just want to learn. So, and I want to take so many people with me. <laughs> as well, we do yeah. It becomes contagious because, because when you start feeling better and you realize you have the personal power to take yes. charge of your life, to feel better, you want yes. to spend that with everybody, right? You want I'm to spread you. it all around you. Absolutely. We do. We have way more power, um, brain power, if you will. That's the first thing that comes to mind since we're talking about mental wellness. But we are not even partially tapping into the power of the brain. You know, we control our thoughts. We control our actions. You know, it's it's quite a, um, it's it's quite amazing when you think about our capabilities as humans and what we can endure and how resilient we are, you know. But it does come with a lot of care. And I think that's the component we're discussing that we're missing. Just caring for ourselves, loving ourselves, right? Because that's where it starts. Yep. It starts with believing in yourself, caring for yourself, loving yourself. But it's challenging. It's really challenging. All they, they're easier than others to love on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, a client just this morning said something uh, very powerful. Um, we were talking in the context of movement and physical pain. Okay. She said, sometimes I have to forgive myself for mm -hmm. not doing something properly. Would, for right. example, if I slouch into the chair, right, then I get up and I experience pain. And it right. sounds silly, but if you're somebody who has chronic pain yeah. and you know that's going to cause serious pain mm -hmm. and you get upset with you, well, that's not serving you. That's not right. doing you any good starting to beat on yourself. Right. You just say, well, you know what? I know better. Next time I'll try better. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep going forward versus I call going down the rabbit hole and just beating on yourself because we're very talented when it gets to beating on ourselves. I know. We're so critical. Why am I so super critical of myself? I'll give everybody in the world grace and forgiveness, but I won't do that for myself. That's something that I'm learning to master, that self-mastery, right? And what you know, and those intrusive thoughts, they will come. Those thoughts, oh my God, you need to lose weight. Oh my God, why are you eating that donut? Oh my God, you know, all of these negative intrusive thoughts. So what we have to do is have a positive thought just prepared. I'm eating this donut because I enjoy it. You know, I'm not overweight. I'm taking care of myself. So just be ready, armed and ready to just combat the negativity at all times. I tell people, you feel a little bit crazy having that internal conversation, you know, the two sides of your head. Right. battling it out which one is gonna win but the more you do it the easier it becomes and the more right. you do the less you will dive down head down right correct because you can be more normalized as you go through the ups and the downs absolutely and it's okay to be down you know it's okay, okay to not fun. feel it's really okay right and you just have to sit in it and really get an understanding okay where is this coming from you know and just kind of do a self-assessment to see, you know, have you had a major change? You know, have you had a major incident in your life? You know, sit in it, feel it and go through it, right? It's okay. It's really well, okay. I think that's another great point that you make. Go through it. Don't shove it under. No, no, you no. Experience it. And I would say, and if this persists for a long period of time, mm -hmm. then seek the help, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's okay because we are just so willing and um we just have a deep desire my staff and i to just care for people we have a heart for people as well and we want to care for you and your loved ones a lot of times here when you come here under our care we're inserted into the family dynamic so we'll take care of the entire family if that's necessary if that's needed because you know i feel like the family is under attack right now it's just like that nucleus of society is just so many so many barriers to families staying together and families communicating appropriately and, and treating each other with dignity and respect. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot right now. Yeah. And I would take that to the extended family, which is society and communities. You know, there is so much separation, so much um, ways to split people and put them apart based on whatever. Right. And sexual orientation, ethnicity, and mm -hmm. it's not serving us. It's not. I mean, we share organs, 
Okay. We share organs. We share blood. We are one in the same humankind. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> right. Above everything, we are human. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's the best part of it. Yeah. The human part of it. Dominique, we cannot wrap up without me asking you, what is your definition of rebellious? Ooh, my definition of rebellious is just stepping out there and being a risk taker. You know what I mean? Just unapologetically living your best life, doing you. Do you, boo? Yeah, I like that. Yes, do you. That is when the power comes, you know, and I mean power, not like it's ego power, egocentric power, but the power of authenticity, the power of being you. And like you said earlier, spreading that feeling good to you to your tribe, to the people around us, family, community, society, and the yes, world. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Dominique, where can people find you? Um, and you're part of the, again, Los Angeles Outpatient Center. Where can people connect with you? Like social media platforms, websites? Yeah, I'm on social media, the one and only Dom on Instagram. That's my tag or Dominique Hamler on Facebook. I'm just trying to, I'm on LinkedIn as well. Just trying to empower and uplift and just show people there is a way out of that dark hole, you know? So we're here to shine a light. We're here to guide you. We're right here in Culver City off of Bristol Parkway. Come see us. Look us up, centeredhealth.com, losangelesoutpatientcenter.com. We're everywhere. Yeah. If you guys, if you're rebels, if you need help, acknowledge it mm -hmm. and ask for it. It's That's the right. best way you can help yourself. And there's That's nothing right. wrong with asking for help. That's it's right. A great thing to ask for help. So that's right. Amen. If you rebels have any questions for Dominique, you know what to do. If you know of anybody who will benefit from this episode, please share. We want to make sure that we educate people, encourage people to take care of their body, mind, and soul and spirit. Yes. Dominique, thank you so much for being here with us today. And everybody, do not forget to stay rebellious. We'll see you next time. Did you enjoy the conversation? like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Want to redefine your success equation to include a healthy body and a healthy mind? Check out our website at rebellious-studio.com.